Whoa, what happened there? Hey, Josh. Hey there, how are you? <laughs> there we go. I'm good, how are you doing? Well, they tell us we'll, the smoke. Yeah, I was gonna say, they, they tell us that we'll be out of hazardous air quality by tomorrow, which would be really nice. Um, of yeah. course, they've been optimistic before, so we'll see. Yeah, mostly I've been trapped in my basement with an industrial air filter running. So. They're just hunker down, staying inside, putting as many air filters as they possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, happy that, um, you know, that be between the allergies and ceramics that I happen to have stuff, you know, including um, heavy duty air filters and N99 masks. I actually yeah. gave away, I had a whole box of non PPE compliant N95 masks that I gave away to the neighborhood. So, um, because lots of people didn't have them. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Jennifer. Hey. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Apologies for uh, missing a few uh, meetings. I have been eaten up by meet, like uh, work meetings lately. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know how it is. The, um... Okay. Um, so are we recording? Yes, we are. I guess we ought to record in this channel. Um, the, um, we don't, have a heavy duty agenda for this. Um, Jennifer, last week we had a discussion around this whole um, steering committee, et cetera, suggestion that uh, Alexis has advanced at the TOC level. Um, folks from the NATS and GRPC project showed up. I think the summary of what we got out of the meeting was um, they have issues with CNCF governance requirements, but none of them seem to be solvable using a steering committee. Um, at least that was what I got out of it. The, um, so, And we didn't really have a lot pending for here. I would like to actually get going on taking up some more pieces of our planned content. Um, since we've written the stuff that we, mostly written the stuff that we already claimed. Does anybody have anything else? Uh, okay. Go ahead. I still I still have a to do list to do to work on. I still have a list to work. On. My internet connection is down, and I am tethering from my phone right now, so I'm Oof. probably. Well, you want to kill? Yeah, you want to kill your video? That might help. You might want to kill your video too, Josh. Same. Just so. Yeah. Okay. Just so she's not seeing it. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, then we can d just have voice. <laughs> okay. The, um, okay. Um, so let me actually look. Um, one thing is if somebody can LGTM the what is governance thing, because all the comments on that have been addressed. Um, I was uh, just taking a look at that. Um, was there was there something else that Don was going to bring up? I still have content that I 
volunteered to do that I have not worked on yet. Um, so I don't know if there was something else Don wanted to bring up there on stuff she was doing. I think we merged the stuff that I was working on. Um, so I would say if you have additional comments on it, just you can just PR them in. We decided it was sort of good enough um, based on what we had in an effort to get things out more more quickly. Was that your question uh, or did I misunderstand that? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was saying I have different stuff that I s signed up to do and I just haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, But I think you had started to say something about there was something you were working on, but I wasn't sure if that was maybe I, oh. maybe... I agreed to do the charter stuff, but I haven't actually started it yet. So I'm hoping to start it later this week. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm I'm signed up for basic project paperwork because that's more content I have in draft form from the open source way. So I just need to get it cleaned up and made appropriate to the CNCF. Um, uh, because of course there's certain kinds of paperwork the CNCF requires. Um, although I want to kind of avoid, I want to, I want to make the requirement stuff separate. So Okay. Um, beyond that, actually everything else from, I guess the one other thing that's not assigned is what to have in your governance.md file. And April has actually taken on a couple of things that she has also not written yet. Um, but but the one thing unassigned is what to have in your governance.md file. So. And then we need to actually get going on doing things for um, requirements. I might actually skip ahead and start working on, you know, what does it mean to adopt the CNCFIP policy? Since that's something I'm dealing with on a number of Red Hat sponsored projects right now. Does anybody know if Contributor Growth has already written up a guide to a how to contribute document? Sure. Uh, I see feel... anything. A contributor's guide or a how to contribute? So, for the requirements section, which we haven't really started working on yet, what I was envisioning was a series of documents from us each of which is a guide to how to address one requirement at the, uh, at the various levels, if you follow me. Mm -hmm. And so one of the requirements for Sandbox is you must have a how to contribute document. So it feels like, you know, our job as SIG contributor strategy as a whole, not necessarily as governance, um, is that we should have, oh, actually, let me look at the template thing. I bet that's where that the is. The contributing template? Yeah. I feel like, it, so this is why I was saying, I feel like there is, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, this is it.
I don't think it's in GitHub yet. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, hopefully for a lot of these things, the requirements we can say, you have to have a contributing, you know, a how to contribute document and here's a template for it, for example. And, and then we're kind of done. Um, the um, so other things will require more write up like COC enforcement really needs a write up and we're gonna need to work with CNCF staff on that. Um, because part of the escalation staff for COC enforcement involves the CNCF staff. The, um, so, but I mean, it's a bit of information that really, like I'm going through this with projects and they are adopting the CNCF COC, but they really don't have any structure set up for how they're going to enforce that COC if people are behaving badly. Um, and so that's guidance that we really need to give. Um, I feel uh, like there's there's so many levels to that particular area. For the contributing thing, we definitely have the template. Uh, it's it's in process. It's I think there's a few areas. It's not in GitHub for code of conduct stuff. I feel like it's it's such um I don't know. There's I want to use the word cesspool, uh, but that's not quite it either. Uh, and I don't want to, I don't, I don't, how do, how do I put this? I don't want to be saying like, this is how, this is how people should behave. I know the CNCF has a code of conduct, but it, it does, like the thing that a lot of projects fail to have is sort of like, how are you going to handle this? And it kind of ties a little bit into governance because you need to have mm -hmm. a separation of, um, you need to have a specific role associated with this. And then you need a way to address when the problem is in your, uh, like a, a community member or contributor um, and what that looks like as well. So it's not that I wanna tell people this is what you should do, but you need to have a way to handle problems it, to, to not not just handling but recognize that there's a problem acknowledge the problem and handle the problem that, that sounds like you want to write this I, i've already got stuff i'm I, I, like that i need to do <laughs> that i haven't done but i do like it's one of these things i feel like it needs a lot of care and i'm mm -hmm. wondering uh, I'm, I'm happy to provide feedback. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anybody that has more experience writing this kind of stuff that's involved uh, in this group uh, already. Um, I don't know. Or if this is a, a, an area where we yeah. can ask people like get people more involved in this group to to like contribute their thoughts here i'm just mm -hmm. trying to think like this is an area where like i think a lot of engineers don't even think about it it's just like oh everybody's gonna be nice uh like i saw this all the time with chef like oh everybody will just be nice like no that's not that's that's not it Hold on, I'm just getting caught up on notes. Maybe we just like, could have like a hacking session on this and just like all put some notes in and then get some feedback from some specialists on code of conduct stuff. I mean, <laughs> like suggestions, uh, I don't know. Don, do you have any feelings here? <laughs> I have too many feelings. I feel like I'm not making any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, the context of a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we do just need a hacking session where we can kind of work on work on some of the stuff because I feel like 
I feel like several of us have bits and pieces of this already. Like I've, I've written code of conducts and I've been on the enforcement committees, but, um, but I think it's a little bit different too for the CNCF projects. Yeah, well, and yeah, I guess I'm just saying, we like just I, said, to, I think we just need to figure this out. I suspect we have enough of the information. I would also say at a first cut, there's non-tricky recommendations here that are fairly general that, and believe it or not, are more than what a lot of CNCF projects are already doing. Like having a COC violations reporting address, for example, um, and having some kind of COC committee that meets confidentially. Most projects don't have that. Um, within the CNCF. Whoops, that was muted. In our spirit of getting things, you know, getting things out to the point where they're useful for people, I think, I think we could pretty easily put together some generic advice. And and then we can build on it if we think that people people need more. I guess I'm saying we should try not to overthink this one too much because it could easily we we could easily go there. That that makes sense. Uh, so so basically, think about it from like a, a perspective of what are some of the instead of all the examples I have in my head of like, oh man, I totally wasn't prepared for that thing. Think about like that, the, 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 the low hanging fruits of like, here are the specific strategies. Make sure you do these things. Here's an example of how to add this uh, to your repositories, your projects. One of the things I've kind of wondered is, is there an like any project are they going to have enough people on the project to have a anonymous coc meeting type thing and is there space in cncf for people to have a more aggregate uh not committee, but something where like you group projects together and then there's a centralized COC handling thing so that it's like a benefit of joining CNCF is that you get like, uh, it's like you're going to handle the project issues yourself unless you're the problem. Uh, but yeah. you get this benefit uh, of a shared responsibility. I, I think that would be an excellent thing to bring up with um, the staff. And if the staff tells us, you know, doesn't have answers with the TOC, because you're right, a lot of projects are too small because particularly one of the other things that you want in a COC committee, right, is some personal diversity. Because if your COC committee is composed entirely of white men who work for the same company, that's going to lead to an inability to handle certain kinds of reports. Um, the, um, and, um, and some projects are not able to get away from that, right? Because their contributor base currently consists of you know, 80% of white men who work for the same company. So um, I think that would be worthwhile bringing up because I mean, part of what we're doing with requirements is actually going through the requirements and bringing them to the staff or the TOC and saying, hey, this requirement is genuinely a problem for projects and here's why. Yeah, um, I really so like the idea. I really like the idea of bringing it up with staff for the 
the TC because I also think, you know, being on some of these in the past, some of the most helpful people were like HR people and companies, you know, foundations have, have HR people who understand kind of the, understand how to keep things confidential. They understand how, you know, how there might be legal implications. They understand some of the, some of the ways of dealing with, with violations that we might not think of. Yeah. Um, I think that's all really good. So who wants to take the ball on that? I mean, I would say the first person to talk to you about that is Amy. And then Amy will tell us what other staff we want to talk to. And then if the staff, you know, if we're extremely lucky, they'll say, well, we were already working on that. Um, and more likely they will say, you need to bring this up at the October, you know, 15th TOC meeting. The one, the one thing I do want to um, bring up about this is that there is a CNCF um, uh, code of conduct page. And uh, this came up for me with the uh, KCDs actually. And um, one of the requirements there was everyone has to have a code of conduct uh, that points to this. And that code of conduct points to a single person. So a key thing about this is making sure that they, we don't get the, oh yes, we already have this and it's this person. Uh, instead, we want to have it be a little bit more uh, decentralized and made up of um, a combination of people uh, from across projects. Uh, so just want to give that insight into my, the challenges I've, ha I've had with talking to CNCF um, about COC type stuff. I'm happy to take on this talk to Amy as an initial thing, not the driver for all things here, but I will definitely uh, talk to Amy and find out whether this is even a possibility. Yeah, well, because we've, we've talked about, we've dealt with some other things before where, you know, I brought it up with CNCF staff and they're like, wait until next TOC meeting because we actually have a thing for that. Um, the, um, now this might also be one of the ones of, Hey, that never re reached the top 20 in our priority list. Um, in which case, you know, next step is to bring it to the TOC. Um, but we can often save some effort by finding out from the staff first, whether or not there's something in process. Cause I agree with you that having, um, uh, reports go to the single person at the Linux Foundation is really not adequate. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's all I have. We all have to do's. It doesn't seem any point in piling on more to do's until we've done the previous things. <laughs> um, the, um, you know, except to the extent, look over those sort of checklist items for requirements, et cetera. And if, if you happen to know someone who is not the three of us um, or April, um, who um, I might be available or have material for one of these things, um, you know, please do ping them. For, for more parallel work. Yeah, I'll have a think about that. I think it would be, I think it'd be great to get more people involved in the governance working group anyways. 
Mm -hmm. The um, okay. Anything else? Not for me. Not for me. Okay. Great. Um, good to talk to both of you. Um, if you have the rest of this hour blocked out for this meeting, maybe use the time to get started on one of those documents. The um, uh, otherwise, see you on Slack, and you know, then in two weeks from now. Oh, and uh, the one thing from the agenda, it's already there in the agenda, is the steering committee thing is going to come up again on the 29th at the TOC meeting, public TOC meeting. Um, so to the extent that we could have people from this working group there, it would be helpful. Yeah, I should be able to make it. Okay. Uh, me too. Awesome. Okay. Talk to you later. All right. See ya. Bye.